Hello, friends. Thank you for engaging with the homily by Pastor Chill Will from Chapel Hill. I hope this message encourages you, challenges you, and moves you to go deeper in your faith and enrich how you love God and love your neighbor in your day-to-day life. Just a reminder, like the scriptures and the gospels themselves, this homily was written for a particular community in a particular context and time and history. And yet, like our sacred texts, I hope these hold timeless truths about God's unconditional love and grace for our lives. We hope these words speak to you in a very meaningful way. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon, but he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He just answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the, their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So, right up front, I need to be clear about our scripture readings this morning, and specifically the gospel reading. I did not pick this gospel story for today's worship service. This text is scheduled in the Revised Common Lectionary within the liturgical seasons of our collective church year. This particular gospel story shows up every three years. It just so happens to land on a day when we mark the start of a new school year, a day when we welcome back Lutheran campus ministry students, And while we seek to be warm and welcoming community and congregation, this is certainly not the most warm and cuddly Jesus we often envision, we think, of Jesus. You ask me, it seems a little out of character. First, we have Jesus using some potty talk, and then we have Jesus literally calling someone a dog. Welcome back, everyone. So yeah, this story about Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew is one of the more difficult stories about Jesus for our modern ears. But hang with me. I believe this story still has something rich and meaningful for our lives and faith and our community. Within the context of Matthew's story about Jesus, chapter 15 is about halfway through. Jesus is teaching and feeding and healing people, showing and sharing what the kingdom of God has come near looks like. And so just before we heard what was read this morning in chapter 15, the religious leaders 
Jesus' contemporaries and colleagues, ask Jesus directly why they are breaking the tradition of the elders. In other words, why are you doing things differently? Jesus pushes back and quotes the prophets from their own tradition, and then he calls the crowd to come closer and to get in and listen to what he has to say. And so we get to listen in on this conversation that Jesus is having, having, having with his disciples about the purity culture of his day. This is an age-old conversation within religion about what makes one righteous or not, what makes someone good or bad, who's on the inside of God's favor, and who's on the outside. And before we post-postmodernists look down on their ancient, outdated ways, we do it too. Not just in rel religious circles, although we kind of invented it, I'm not sure if you're on social media or not, or what kind of news cycle you consume, but there is plenty of insider, outsider. Check me out, I'm better than you. How could you think that way? Why are you behaving that way? Are you really eating that kind of chat and judgment going on? Cancel culture, nothing new. And so this part really isn't out of character for Jesus. Jesus challenges the toxic systems of his day. That is what got him in trouble with the religious establishment of his own tribe, his own colleagues. Jesus didn't condemn the Torah or say that it was irrelevant, but rather he shifted the focus from outside appearances to what's within one's own heart. It's not about the show, it's about the intent, what comes from within one's soul and essence. Jesus has a way and a posture that turned things upside down and inside out. The last first, the first last, literally, metaphorically. Okay, got it. That's a great spiritual life lesson, one that I'll do my best to put in my own heart. Time to move on, to go to the next town. The kingdom of God has come near in Jesus, and so it's time to move. Time to keep moving forward with it. But then Jesus does something unexpected. Again, not a, that much out of character. He heads in a different direction. He heads north. He leaves Jewish territory and into a foreign country. The text says he withdrew. Maybe Jesus was feeling the heat. Maybe he needed to get off-grid, under the radar, out of popular range, getting away from the Wi-Fi signals of his day. He was challenging the religious norms, and so perhaps he needed to catch his breath to get away from scandal, criticism. So he goes north, out of the way, out of the country, into foreign territory. And then here comes the part of the story that seems so out of character for Jesus. A story that makes me uncomfortable. A story I'm tempted to apologize for. A story that I wouldn't necessarily pick to preach on. But the author of Matthew decided that this was important. He wasn't embarrassed by the story, so he wanted to share. And so Jesus is in this foreign territory perhaps to get a breather, and yet he is known. He is still popular. The word has gone viral of who this rabbi is and what he's about and what he does. The word has spread even to those who aren't a part of his Jewish religion. The word has spread to even those who are not on the inside of their traveling preachers and teachers. Unnamed woman, a Canaanite, a Gentile, Someone who has a whole different religion and worldview has a sick and possessed daughter, and this mother is desperate. As a parent, I can relate. I would do anything for my children if they were sick or unwell. So she cries out. Hex says she shouts. Hex doesn't water down the situation. Jesus doesn't answer her. He's, he's silent. It says he did not answer her at all. Ouch. I know that 
I have had prayers and pleas in my own life and faith where God is silent and it doesn't feel good. The silence of God is a real spiritual dilemma and mystery. The Bible doesn't shy away from that mystery. This unnamed woman stands her ground, though, and she doesn't give up. She keeps shouting. The disciples are like, okay, Jesus, we need you to do something about this. Please send her away. We've heard that before, right? What a great opportunity for Jesus to rebuke his disciples again for not getting it, you know, like they did with the thousands who were hungry and needed bread and fish and those who were bringing children to Jesus. And Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. But this time, Jesus doesn't do that. Here it seems that even Jesus is using insider and outsider language in his relationship to his own mission and ministry. That's hard. Seems like some sort of curveball. But this woman doesn't stop. He forces Jesus to look at her in the eye, see a real human being. Just as Jesus pushed back against the religious establishment and their resistance to change and to grow, Jesus gets a taste of his own medicine as she challenges him and how he is seeing the world. I love that in this story, right before the story with the woman, Jesus is preaching the intent of the heart and being not focused on outward appearances, all in theory, but this woman is forcing Jesus to practice what he preaches. So does God change God's mind? Can Jesus learn to grow like us? Being fully human, did Jesus experience curveballs that help him shift and focus in how he sees the world? Can walls and territorial lines be broken and crossed? Is God's kingdom just for one particular people or for those who are on the inside? This is what Matthew's community was wrestling. And watching Jesus and his disciples learn and grow and expand can be a sign and a model for them and for us who still wrestle with these age-old questions. You see, relationships matter. Community matters. Looking someone in the eye and listening to their situation makes a difference. Yes, there is a reason Matthew did not shy away from this story about Jesus. Our faith can be messy and throw us curveballs. Our faith can be nuanced and nonlinear. And yet God's grace and mercy can't be put in a box. God's love and grace can break through. And it seems that even Jesus can grow when he was challenged. So much so that within the gospel of Matthew, from this time forward, chapter 15 and on, the gospel and Jesus' ministry shifts and starts to expand. And it continues to do so all the way to the end when the risen Christ will say, go and make disciples of all nations. In continuity of what we heard read, the prophet Isaiah. God welcomes all. You see, the gospel is more than a transcendent abstract idea. It's more than going to heaven when you die. It's more than being nice or not cussing in traffic or behaving well, although don't discourage those things. But there is more to the life and journey of faith. And so the challenge for us is to bring this faith out there within here, even to look in the eye of those who are scrambling for crumbs, dinner tables. This challenging story challenges us to keep asking the good questions, to take a good look at our relationship, to reevaluate our insider and outsider lines that draw in the sand. We have a lot ahead of us. There's a lot going on in our world in this political season and in our own searches and our own congregational reflection and study as individuals and as a community together. I hope that this may be a time of growth and learning, expanding, and boldness.
May our community of faith be a laboratory and an exploration station, a place of curiosity and intellectual humility and openness to God's movement in our lives. All the while gathering around a font, gathering around a table to catch our breath, be washed and nourished and to hear again that we are loved no matter what we achieve or not. Who knows? We all might come out different, changed, There are so many stories in the Bible of people wrestling with God and having long conversations and pleas and that that God is turning the world upside down and some even walk away with their limb. Some walk away healed. That we aren't alone. Much as we have going on in the world, in our community, in our lives, I'm confident that God's grace will break through and prevail taking our lead from Jesus, we can break new ground and grow in what God is already doing in our midst. Amen. Thank you for listening. If there is anything that stood out for you, or if you have a question, or if you want to have a conversation, you are always free to reach out and contact us. And remember, you are not alone in this journey of faith, and that you are loved with a love stronger than death.